What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to implement a binary search algorithm in python so let us get right into it all right guys so this video is going to be a fundamental one we're going to talk about an algorithm which is quite simple actually but we're going to talk about how it's implemented in python what it can do for us and we're also going to look at the runtime complexity so for those of you who don't know anything about algorithms and data structures you might be a little bit confused when I use stuff like this function or this algorithm is in O of n or in O of log n and so on. Um, if you don't know anything about that and you don't care that you don't know anything about it, you just want to know how a binary search works, what it does and how to implement it in Python, you can watch the video just like that. If you're interested in some um, background information, so what is actual runtime complexity and why is the runtime complexity of this, that, and why is the runtime complexity of some other function, something else. Uh, if you want to know that, you can look at my algorithms and data structures course on this channel. It's a four hour course, I think, where I talk about runtime complexity, how to analyze algorithms and so on. But mostly there, we worked with pseudocode. So we didn't actually use Python or Java or any language. Uh, other than pseudocode, so a pseudo language, you could say, in order to implement data structures and algorithms. And so today I want to show you how to do a binary search algorithm in Python. And for this, what we're going to do first is we're going to have a numbers uh, list. And if you want to, or, or let's put it in a different way. If we're working with data, we want to avoid complex algorithms. So we don't want to have something that has exponential runtime. And if it's polynomial runtime, for example, n squared, n to, the, uh, n to the power of three and so on, n cubed basically, if we have such a runtime complexity, we can deal with it, but we prefer stuff like linear runtime or pseudo linear runtime or even logarithmic runtime. So if we have a numbers list, if we have a numbers list, let's say we have, uh, or actually let's do it the following way, we're going to say import random and we're going to say numbers equals and we're going to have an empty list here for in range and we're going to generate a hundred values here and we're going to say numbers dot append random dot rand int from zero to 500 so we're going to have a hundred numbers we're going to generate a hundred numbers in between zero and 500 and we're going to append those two numbers um and if we run this right now, we're going to get some output and I'm going to get that output. We're not going to get some output because I'm not printing anything. There you go. So this is the output and I'm going to copy this because we want to have the static list. It's still random, but we want to have it one time. Uh, I mean, we could also just use a seat, but that's the more complicated way here. So we have this numbers list right now that we randomly generated, but as you can see, this list is not sorted. So finding an element in this list here is going to be kind of difficult because, you know, if I'm looking for, let's say 25, in order to find 25, I would have to go through all these individual um, values here and check if they're equal to five, uh, 25, sorry. And I can only say that I found 25 if I find 25, or I can say, uh, I don't find 25 because I reached the last element and there was no 25 in this list. So I need to go through all the elements in the worst case. So it has a worst case complexity of n, n being the number of elements of the list. So now this is actually not too bad for finding stuff, but if I have a sorted list, I can do it way faster than that. I can do it in logarithmic time. So one thing that you need to know about the binary search, if you didn't know already, is that binary search works only on sorted lists. So in order to sort a list in Python, we just say numbers.sort. And Python usually uses, or not usually, Python uses the Tim sort algorithm. So the Tim sort is running in O of n log n. So this is pseudo linear time. So if you just want to find stuff, linear runtime would be more efficient. But if you have a sorted list, it would be faster to use a binary search than just to go through all the elements. Because if you have a sorted list, you have a special property, namely that the small values are on the left and the high values are on the right. So what we can do here, if we ignore that this or not ignore, but if we say we already have a sorted list or uh, that we 
yeah, that we have a sorted list, basically, that's it. If we have a sorted list, we can look up elements in logarithmic time. And I'm going to show you why in a second, or maybe you already know why. But if we print that, if we print numbers, once it's sorted, you can see, <clears throat> in this case, we don't have 25. But what we can do here is we can say, let's say I look for the value 25 again. So roughly in the middle, I'm going to make a split. Let's say this is the middle here. So I'm going to say, okay, is 25 the middle element? So let's say this is the middle element, or we don't have a middle element. Uh, if the answer is no, we're going to say, okay, is 25 less than the middle element or larger than the little, uh, middle element? And we're going to see, okay, 25 is less than this. So we're going to just ignore all of the right side here. And we're going to go to the middle of this part here. Let's say it's somewhere here, for example. And we're going to say, okay, is 25 to the left or the right? And then we're going to go uh, somewhere here. And then we're going to say, okay, is 25 to the left or to the right? And then we're going to go here, for example, we're going to see to the right, and we're not going to find it, we're going to terminate. So this is logarithmic, because we're always dividing the, the problem size by two. So if I have something like 100, I go to 50, I go to 25, and so on, until I reach just one element. So this is very efficient, and we're going to build that in Python now. All right, so let's go ahead and implement a binary search algorithm. Now, one thing that I want to mention about the logarithmic runtime is why it's so efficient, is that if you double the problem size from 100 to 200, what that means is you just have to do one additional step, one additional recursion, uh, which is very efficient, because if you have 200 elements, you have the problem size and you're at 100, which also means that if you double the problem size twice, so you actually quadruple it from 100 to 400, you just have two more additional steps, which is like nothing. You have 400 elements, then you have the problem size to 200, you have it again to 100, and you're back at the initial 100 that we talked about. Uh, and this is the power of logarithmic runtime. You have very few additional steps that you need to take for a radical increase in problem size. Um, so we're going to start by saying def binary search, and we're going to pass a numbers list like that. And we're going to pass a number that we're looking for. And since we're calling this function recursively, we need to also specify left and right, which are going to be the boundaries uh, for the area that we're interested in. So in the beginning, the left element, uh, the leftmost element is going to be left. And the last element is going to be right, of course, in a sorted list, not in any list. Um, and then if we figure out that we need to go to the right side to the right half of the list, we are going to move the left to the middle. And otherwise, we're going to move the right to the middle. So first of all, we want to have the basic case that if the left boundary is larger than the right boundary, we're going to return negative one, this happens basically I mean, it happens when you have a bad input, and it happens if we don't find any element. Um, and otherwise, we're going to say, okay, the middle element, the middle index of this list is going to be left boundary plus right boundary divided by two with a floor division, because we don't need floating point numbers as indices here. We need to have an exact index. Um, once we have that, we're going to check if the middle element itself is the number that we're looking for. So if number is numbers list mid, if that is the case, we just return mid because we found the object. Otherwise, we're going to say, um, let's call it elif. If the number is less than the middle element, so this basically in a sorted list means that the element is going to, the, uh, to be to the left of the middle. If that is the case, we're going to recursively call the binary search function by saying, we're going to do it on the same list. So we're not going to actually, you know, cut off the list and pass a new list. But we're going to call the same list. Um, we're going to look for the same number, but we're going to move the right to the middle. Why? Because obviously, we're going to look in the left part in the left half of the initial list. And because of that, we're going to not care about the right side. So we're going to move the right limit, the right boundary to the middle so that we look at the left half. So we're going to leave left uh, the way it was, and we're going to say mid minus one. So this is going to limit the problem size to uh, or the problem to the left side. And if nothing is the case, so if 
uh, the number is not equal to the middle element, it's not less, it's going to be larger or equal to. And if that is the case, we're going to do the same thing for the left side, we're going to move the left boundary to the middle. So we're going to pass number list, numbers list, uh, we're going to pass number, and we're going to say mid plus one to the right. And the good thing about this is that we're done now because when this happens, when we limit it to the left side, we're going to just repeat the same process, we're going to calculate the middle there, we're going to check, okay, if the middle element is uh, the number that we're looking for, return the index, otherwise check if it's left or right, half it again. And since we're working with a new left, which is uh, with a new right, which is middle minus one or with a new left, which is middle plus one, we're going to always have the problem size until we have no elements left or we found the element. So this is the binary search algorithm in Python. All right, so let's give it a try. But before we do that, we need to add two keywords here, we're not just calling binary search, we're returning the binary search. So we need to return whatever it brings us. And now we can go ahead and say, print binary search on numbers. I'm looking for let's say, I don't know what number do we have here? 17, for example, and we're going to pick index zero as a start. And we are going to pick the length of numbers, minus one, I think minus one is right. I'm not sure maybe we need to pass the whole length, but I think minus one makes sense. Um, yeah, I think so. So we're going to pass this and it should find 17 at some index, I'm not sure which one. If we run this here, you can see two, if we print the list, we should probably find it in the third position, as you can see here. So we can also pass 116, for example, 116. And there you go 23, which basically means that it's at the 24th position here. Um, there you go. So this is how it works, we can also try to I'm not even sure if this works It's improvised right now. But if I say, for example, counter equals zero, and I say global counter. And I want to know, okay, how many times do you actually enter this function, I can go ahead and say, uh, counter plus equals one. And after I call this function, I'm going to print counter, I'm not even sure if that works, as I said. But I want to see how many times it enters the function seven times. Does this make sense? Um, I mean, actually, it's not necessarily the logarithm base two of 100. Or is it I'm not sure what is what is two to the power of seven. This is actually a sin that I'm asking that right now, because I'm a computer scientist, but I think two to the power of seven. Yeah, it actually comes close to 100. So it actually, it's fine. Um, and if I double the problem size to 200 elements, which I'm now going to do in a different way. So I'm going to say numbers equals empty list, and I'm going to say import, or actually, I'm going to say import random before that import random. And maybe I can set a seed here. Can I say random seed? There you go. I'm going to just say neural nine is the seed. So we should always get the same list. And we're going to say numbers equals that for in range, and we're going to have first, let's try with 100 to see that we're actually having the base case handled. So for nothing in range 100, we're going to say numbers dot append. And we're going to append random dot rand int from zero to 500, for example, or actually, let's go with 1000. So we have not too many duplicate values. So then we're going to sort it, there you go. And we're going to look for a number. <clears throat> let's see. We don't find a number, obviously, because we have too many values. So we first need to take a look at the values. Let's see if the list is always the same. We have 218, 218. Okay, it's always the same list. So let's look for 119, for example. 119. We're not going to print the numbers anymore. Um, and it takes five iterations. Now, of course, logarithmic runtime complexity is the worst case complexity, you can still find it in the first try because it's in the middle, for example. 
Um, but we can see that probably if I increase this right now to 200, we should not see. Okay, we saw three more. Let's see what happens if I do 400. What nine more? Uh, one more. Then if I do 800, I got 10 more. Uh, one more. I got 10. Uh, then if I go with 1,600, I got 11. There you go. So let's do one more. 33,000. Uh, 32,000. And I got 10 again. So again, it depends also on a little bit of luck. But as you can see, uh, it doesn't really scale a lot because the counter tells us how many times did I enter the function. You saw that from 8,000 to 16,000, this was just one more time. And if I doubled it one more time, it even got less than that. So you can see logarithmic runtime is quite um, efficient. Even if I increase the size radically, I'm not going to have much more to do because I just have to have one more time and that's it. So this is the power of a binary search algorithm. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Also, let me know if you're interested in more of those fundamental computer science videos because I always do some projects with machine learning and camera streaming and I don't know what, networking and stuff like that. If you're interested in more fundamental stuff like sorting algorithms, searching algorithms, pathfinding algorithms in Python, let me know in the comment section down below and let me know by hitting the like button and then I'm going to do more videos like that. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.